You want to turn a sprite sheet into an actual animation? Hey, I am Ives and in this video I am going to teach you the basics of animation player. So here is our Godot. We have our world scene, in it we have the player scene and we also have two PNG sprite sheets because I want our player have two animations, one for idle and one for running. Let's go straight to the player, we have a sprite for it, an unset collision shape and also code that currently only handles the movement. Since we are working with animation players, let's add one to the scene. The only button we currently can use is the animation. Create a new animation and call it idle. It has automatically created an animation one second long. This bar here means zoom. We can zoom in, zoom out. Also here is our snap. Right now I can move the animation only by 0.1 second, one tenth in other words. But if I change snap to say 0.05, I can now move through every one twentieth of a second. But we will stick to the 0.1 snap. If you go to any node with this animation tab open, you can see these keys. These keys mean that we can link the value to some point at the animation. Since it's idle animation, I want to set the texture to idle. And first of all, animation is basically changing values. So here I set my texture. Since we are going to change the textures, I for sure want to link it. Confirm the creation and boom, you have your first track. Now in the animation tab set the horizontal frames to 6. Since I have 6 frames I have set it to 6. And I am not going to link the horizontal frames because both sprite sheets has only 6 frames. And here now we are going to work with the frame. Link it. Don't use Bezier curves, just create it. You set your first frame. Now move to the second 0.1, set the next frame, and then it automatically moves to the next point in the animation and changes the frame. Great. Now let's cut the animation to 0.6. So for every frame we will have 0.1 second. Perfect, we've got the animation, but it's not looping. So here this animation looping button, just press it and now boom, now it's looped and it will go forever until we stop the animation manually or we change it or whatever. Also here is this small A button, it means auto play. So when the sprite is created and loaded, the animation will play automatically. Since it's idle animation, I think it's okay to have it as an auto play animation. Let's check what we've got, go to the world. And now, as you can see, it's working. But the only problem is we don't still have the running animation. We need to add the running animation. So go to animation, new, name it run. And basically the procedure is the same. Set the texture, set up the frames. Don't forget to set the animation looping on. And now we've got it. And we still don't have the animation of running, even though we have added it. Why? Because we didn't change it. So go to the player code. Because we are referring to the animation player to play certain animation, we need to create a reference. Great. And now in the code, just write animation player, play, and the name of the animation as a string. And when the player is idle, the same but with the different animation name. Look, it's working. But now we have a problem that the player does not mirror like that. I think you have already seen that I just flipped it. So what the problem? To mirror the sprite, there are basically two ways of doing that. You can flip it and the scale. What's the difference between them? Let's say, let's say that this is a box and it's the child of the sprite. And we want the box to move accordingly to the sprite, of course, because it's like he's holding it in his hands. So it must be in front of his face all the time. And look, when we flip the sprite horizontally, the box doesn't move. But if we change the scale value, it moves. So I think you've got the idea why we should use scaling for it instead of flipping. So now we need to do that in code and it's actually quite easy. 
Before we add needed code, first add a reference to the sprite because we are working with sprite values. And in the player is moving part, add the next code. It basically means if the sprite scale x doesn't face the horizontal direction the player is moving towards, then change the direction of the scale on the opposite. And that's it. Check it again. Go to the right, it faces right. Go to the left, it faces left. But if you go straight up or down, something weird is happening. The bug can be solved quite easily. The only thing we needed to check is whether the player is moving by the x-axis. And that's it. Now, as you can see, it's working absolutely fine and just as we wanted it to be. Why didn't we use this code in the idle as well? Because let's think about it. The player can change the direction only when it's moving. So there was no need to copy this code to the idle part. And that's it. I hope the video was helpful to you and you liked it. And if you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It was Ives and until next time.